Hey, so here's our 1969 Camaro. This is an employee restoration we did about five years ago. It's seen a lot of wear and tear, and it is to the point where it is eating oil. So the task today is to figure out where that oil consumption is coming from. My speculation going into this, because it's not dripping on the ground, it can come from two spots. It can come from bad rings, or it can come through the valve seals. So I'm gonna walk through how we determine where that problem is at before we physically tear the engine into the engine. First off, I want some, I'm gonna inspect the spark plugs. All right, so first thing I wanna do, we've already kind of looked at it after it was running and warmed up a little bit, looking at the dual exhaust, it'll give, potentially give you an indication if it's coming from the left side or the right side. Now granted, don't get fooled by moisture. Moisture burns white, oil burns a very light blue. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't see it until it's under load. All those types of things. But at the end of the day, it's still eating oil going down the road and uh, it is not uh, just pouring out of the rear main or dripping externally. Um, so it's certainly going through the combustion chamber. So I'm gonna start on the driver's side. It is, it is warm, not too bad, but it is warm. With any luck, I'll be able to pull plugs off of this. There it goes. Okay, so as I pull these plugs out, I'm gonna lay them up on the air cleaner in order. That way we can see if there's a specific cylinder that's causing the issue. Because the likelihood that every bank decide to start blasting oil or every cylinder start blasting oil is not very likely. All right, so it's pretty sooty right here. Yeah, geez, plugs would be nice. All right, let's get the second plug out. Number three. Well, first one definitely could be better. Well, way better. Better in what? Better in well, the plug or meaning the... It's got something going on in that cylinder because it's... A, it shouldn't be white at all. Um, it's got a big gob of crud between the insulator or the... Um, um, electrode insulator up here, right here, and then to the, the thread side. So number three is burning, uh, definitely burning oil, because A, look at all the, all the uh, black. It, it should be tan at the end of the day. If it's burning well, and I should be able to see where the electrode is and the loop is, it shouldn't blend into one solid mass. Um, this spark plug also has very little gap at this point because of all that buildup. Um, I'm surprised that one's even firing at this point. I would call that most likely oil fouled, which is probably some of the reason we hear the exhaust note kind of not as crisp as it normally is. So here are the plugs out of the driver's side bank from one out to seven. So one, three, five, and seven. So what I'm looking for is, is there one cylinder in particular that is burning more oil than the other. It just gives me an indication of which cylinder is the problem, or are there more than one cylinder, or did it overheat and it has a lot of different issues, uh, which would affect every cylinder. Um, I haven't done the passenger side yet, and we'll do that in a moment. But what I see so far is something is definitely awry because none of these plugs are burning well. So here is a, actually the plug out of the Model A that is leaking oil, not burning oil, but see how clean that, just the general area or the contrast is between these two. Um, it should not have any sort of growth off the porcelain. It should not have full of black as number three cylinder does. I would say from what I see right now, number three is the worst offender and it is burning the most amount of oil 
Um, in fact, I'd even venture to say that this plug does not fire. So I think we even have a dead hole from that aspect, meaning it's not getting any ignition to burn the fuel um, because this is, from the naked eye at least, it is, the electrode is grounded to the loop, which means it can't create a spark because it has to have a gap to, to do a spark. And uh, yeah, so that's that bank. Two, four, six, and eight. Now we can look at all of them at once. We have one cylinder, seven I would say at a glance is actually burning the best uh, and still not great. Every one of them has some amount of chalk to them, which I need to go back and look at something. I wonder if it's actually even has an issue with coolant. But I would say these cylinders on, the, on this bank is not burning certainly as much oil as that one. So from an oil consumption standpoint, the majority of the oil is going through number three. So now, next? in order for oil to enter a combustion chamber, it can only come in two ways. The first place is in a combustion chamber, you have to have pressure. And as you have that, um, you create the um, pressure in the chamber. The rings have to seal. If the rings don't seal, it will draw oil in when it, as, it, as the piston pumps up and down. It'll pump actually oil from the crankcase into the combustion chamber. The second area is on the valve stem seals. So you have oil in the top of the valley underneath the valve covers. As you're doing the intake stroke and you're drawing fuel in and the intake valve is open, it can also, if the guide and seal are bad on the intake valve, it will suck oil through that seal and then into the combustion chamber. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a compression gauge, which is this. So what this does, you thread it into the spark plug hole, the O-ring creates the seal, you put this gauge on, and then we will spin the engine uh, four to eight revolutions and see where that compression comes up to. Typical compression numbers are for internal combustion gasoline engine is going to be somewhere around 100 even up maybe in the 160 range it all depends on the compre compression of the engine in general um, the key is is we're looking in this case what we're looking for is a one cylinder to be less than the other or all of them really low or a big differential between cylinders. So 10% is the general rule to say yes the engine's healthy relative to compression. Um, what that tells us is the rings are sealing and the uh, valves are sealing. It doesn't tell us anything else, um, but we have to start somewhere. So here we go. Running blind here, but there we go. Nice and tight, it has an O-ring to finish the seal. Plug your tester on there. in general terms, here's our lowest, 130, and we'll use six because it's easier to see. That's our highest. We got a delta of 30 PSI. So that is 20%, real close, just a little bit above 20%. That's not horrible. It's not exactly what I would want, but it's not horrible. Um, now my next step here is I'm going to do a wet test, wet compression test, which is putting oil in the cylinders and then doing a compression test again. What that'll do is it'll help seal up the rings and starts to isolate where that leak is actually at. So if, it's, if the number jumps up, then that means the rings are the culprit and it's not the valves. 
and it's just a model indicator to know where, where our real issue is at. And again, the reason I'm gonna do that is because I do have this one cylinder that's way down low, and I wanna see if I have a, a, it potentially a broken ring or something there, because I'm eating oil the most in number three based on the plugs. So what I'm gonna do is just put a couple squirts of oil into the cylinder. That's gonna help seal up the rings and uh, bring that compression number up. Anything to watch out for? Uh, yeah, on this, don't put too much oil in it. Because? Two, three. So I like to put three pumps of oil in there. I know that's plenty to seal the rings, but not hydrolock the piston. Hydrolocking would be bad. You don't want to have so much fluid in the top of the combustion chamber that you cannot compress the fluid in the, the piston. I'll say locks up and then something has to give and it's usually the rod. Here we go. Either go up or it'll stay the same. We are at the same, so 160. So the rings are sealing the best they can on that cylinder. Now let's compare that to three. we go she jumped up to 150 that says our leak is basically coming out of that cylinder at the rings uh, hmm. well this is not going to be the easy fix so if that number would have stayed low that would have meant the, the valves were leaking um, this tells me that the rings are bad or leaking such that it's drawing oil up from the crankcase. It is getting drawn into the combustion chamber, witnessed by the ugly spark plug in this hole. And uh, yeah, doesn't explain the white, so that might mean that all the valve stem seals are leaking as well. Now we could take this a little bit further and we could do a leak down test in this cylinder, which for the sake of doing it, we'll show you how to do that too. All right, so the first thing on the leak down test, I'm gonna get this valve cover out of the way, and then uh, I'm gonna pull the rocker arms off so that will close the valves, and that way I don't have to worry about, when I put pressure into the top of the cylinder, it's gonna push the piston to the bottom of the stroke. Of course, as it pushes the piston down, it rotates the engine, and subsequently could open, the camshaft rotate, and it could sub subsequently open up one of the valves and it's a bear to try to put a breaker bar on the crankshaft to hold it from spinning while you put an air to it and all that. Um, also doing this leak down test I will be able to narrow it down 100% to the rings versus the valves. Just because taking this out if I can avoid it would be fantastic. Okay so here's what a leak down tester looks like. It has two gauges on it and it has a hose again to, to put air into the cylinder. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this pressure at 90 PSI. So we'll have incoming air from our air compressor. We'll set it to 90 PSI using the regulator. And then this number is going to be the percentage of leak down. Um, similar to the compression, you know, anywhere from zero you know, you start to get pretty loose as you get down in here. So someplace before 30, I'd like to see 10 to 20. Um, but at the same token, we're gonna see where that air is coming from at a minimum. So we're gonna, we connect up our uh, hose to our gauge, which is actually an outlet, not an inlet like the compression tester now. And here's our supply here. Uh, and you'll notice the engine turned over as it's got pressure on it, like I said. It's, of course it's also in gear, but it'll help hold it, it'll be fun. All right, so right now, we're at a little bit more, a little bit more than 90, so let's back this up just a, just a hair, and we'll come sneak up to it. 
this isn't overly critical, but it's nice to be consistent. Okay, so with the air pressure on there, you can see it push the piston down. Um, like I was talking about, we don't have to worry about our valves. They are 100% closed with the spring pressure. And right now, we're at 90 pounds. We're almost 30 pounds or a 30% leakage. Between someplace between 25 and 30 uh, leak. Looks like about 26, 27. And I can, we can audibly hear it. Okay, so at this point, the thing you want to do is have this out of the way. Now that air is escaping wherever it can in that cylinder. Valves are closed, rings are in place to seal the bottom side of that combustion chamber. Um, if it's an intake valve, I would hear it up here. And obviously I can't put it way over there, but it's certainly not coming out of the intake valve. Um, I, will go, I can go back to the back. This is a true dual exhaust, so I only need to listen to one tailpipe. And I can hear a little bit here, kind of like listen to a seashell, but there's no air physically blowing out of that. So the crankcase vents up through the uh, lifter valley. If you think about oil flow, oil flow has to go from the heads down through the lifter valley into the crankcase, so obviously there's holes there to for air to come up through as well. And I would say 100% of the, any of the leakage is coming, is escaping up through that crankcase, which means back to what we said with the wet test on the compression, these rings are leaking. This one in particular, cylinder in particular. Um, I think just as a comparison, what we'll do is we'll take and throw the gauge on, uh, well, since I already took off number, uh, number five here, exhaust, we'll move the gauge to back to number five and show, show a difference of what these numbers look like. Here to this one, turn it on. There goes the motor rolling. Okay, let's see what this one builds to. Interesting. I would expect the leak number on that cylinder to actually be a little bit better than the one at 130. It actually shows even less at 30 uh, percent, and uh, which really concludes that this motor needs to come out. And um, but I'm betting this is what was overheated or got hot enough a couple times, and the in the ring tension is gone. So uh, long story short, on this one. We got ourselves a 396 Redline Rebuild. Yanker, boys.